everyone welcome back to RTS and welcome to a fun little video today and this is also an unexpected video because I'm going to be packing up like a medium-sized kit to be taking on the road with me and I didn't plan this but I found out from hubby that I may have three days to myself and I might have some time that I'm gonna want something to do and I was telling one of the gals on Deborah's Facebook group if I don't take a kit I know I'll be sitting there and say, why didn't you bring something? So this is one of those situations. I'm going to take a kit. If I don't get it, get into playing with it, that's fine. I must be having too much fun elsewhere. But I would much rather have something than not have it. So that's what I decided to do. So what I decided to do then also is give myself a time limit. You have 30 minutes. Go put, the, go put something together. Get it in a bag and get busy packing the rest of your things. Because clearly, I'm sitting here pulling together scrapbook items. And I should be packing shoes and clothes. But, you know, as a scrapbooker, what's the priorities? Paper, of course. So, yeah, I need to get cracking, but it is what it is. So I thought I would show you because I did say in a recent video that I would definitely do this. Now, on this trip, I will not be going by plane. I will be going by vehicle. So this is much easier. I don't have to worry about space and then also the items that I'm taking. Uh, so in another video, I'll show you if I was flying as to what I would take. Sometimes I don't even take scrapbook supplies when I fly because it's just too, it's too complicated. And I don't want someone to take my Fisker's trimmer away. Away from me no <laughs> I'll throw a fit I'll be one of those crazy lazy ladies at the airport okay so recently I was gifted and blessed with these few items this is crepe paper hooray everyone is seeing it show up a Tuesday morning and I will tell you it is adorable and the color scheme is just festive you can do a lot more than birthday and so I'll talk more about that so I thought this is what I would do. It was laying right here. It's recent. It was in my brain. And it's also it's beautiful colors. And I don't, I'm kind of tired of doing fall right now. So I thought I would just take these items and build my kit around it. So that's what I will show you. So those are my starting, you know, my kit starters. But I wanted to show you the tools that I'm taking and then also to how am I packing it. Because again, I have 30 minutes. I timed myself. It took me 35 minutes, maybe 36 minutes to do this. So I wanted to show you on the fly, literally on the fly, what I'm taking with me and I'm going to be in and I will be in a, in a hotel that I do have, you know, a table and chairs and a kitchen and, a, you know, a dining room. So I will have plenty of room to uh, scrap. So space is not limited, but I don't want to take everything in my space but I want options. So of course, the first thing I do is I tell myself if I wanted to sit down and I had that paper pad in front of me, what would I need? So of course you can see my trimmer. And then along with trimmer, I have an extra set of blades. Not that I probably will need one because this is a recent blade, but you know, things do break and I would much rather have that extra. So my blades and then of course my T-square, have to have my T-square and I have two pair of scissors. I have a long and a short. Okay. And I need both of those. That's just when I scrapbook, I seem to grab them. I have a pen in case I want to do some drawing and of course adhesives. Adhesives, I think, is the biggest thing. And, of course, pen and paper in case I need to make some notes because there may be something that I want to do on a layout and I forgot to bring or I just can't finish it. That will come in handy. And so, of course, Big Red. That is the adhesive that I'm going to be taking along. I can't scrapbook without that. And then, of course, two, eight, uh, two refills. Now, I will guarantee you I do not need two refills because at the end of the year I will be telling you how many refills I use for the whole year. But, you know, things do break. Uh, I'm taking two and then also to my quick dry, which has my uh, fine line applicator on it and my super glue gel and my Tombow. And then also, see, I'm, you see what I'm saying? It's more adhesives than anything else, but you know, it is paper. That's what you need. So I have score tape. I don't know if I'm going to need it, but it's not going to take up that much space. And then also I took two small ro ro uh, rolls of foam. And so... I will just use these. If I need them, they're just there. That's why I have these little pair of scissors. Okay, so those are, I'm looking around. Those are the tools. Let's see, T-square, yes. Do I have everything I need? No, but I have enough. These are the basics, okay? Oh, I need one more basic. What is that? A pen? And I gotta make sure it's sharpened. Hold on, <laughs> because I'll forget. I wanna make sure it's sharpened. Yeah, I'm just gonna go. And if I would need a pencil, Sharpen. I just asked maid service. I say you have a pencil sharpener. I'm not afraid to ask anybody anything. No, I am not. But I'm glad I did that because now I also noticed something else I'm going to need. And when I used to take scrapbooking with me all the time, 
I did have a packing list just for scrapbooking supplies, but I don't really do that anymore because sometimes it depends on how long I'm going, where I'm going, how long I'm going to be in the vehicle, which that's another story. And I might add that to this video. I have a 14 hour drive one way. What am I taking <laughs> in the vehicle? So I will show you that. Maybe I'll add that to that. So there is my bread little foam pad and my bread pokey tool, which is just a glorified push pin. But I am going to take some breads along. So those are my tools. Now, how will I pack those tools? I'm going to show you anything that will fit in this little bag right here. It's like a cushion bag. So I'm not afraid to put scissors in there. So, and then my pen, my pencil, little scissors, all this refill, and... Yeah, any of all this small stuff. My tools. Now let me say you about the glue here for a minute. These are my main adhesives. So um, that's the only ones I'm taking. I'm not taking extras. Why? Because these bottles are basically new. So if I know the bottles are brace, uh, you know, basically new or full bottles, I don't take extras. Not for a few days, no. And then of course my foam is going to go, and I am going to put that in there because that will get lost. I will stick that just in there. Okay, so that is, I'll stick my pen in there. That is my little tool caddy. So nothing's going to get harmed. And the rest of this, I'll show you how I would pack that. Okay, so I will stop there. No, I got one more thing to show you, and then I will come back and show you what I pulled together for everything else. Okay, so let me just put all this on the floor because i got to pack it in ways. Yeah, 30 minutes, 35 minutes. This wasn't too bad, but I, I'm not going to tell hubby I took 35 minutes out of my schedule. Yeah, because I should be packing other things. So then what I decided, okay, I have my basic toolkit. I basically have that paper pad. So what do I need? I need cardstock. And so in that paper pad, and this is what I clearly went by. And this, oh, what was that? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. We're falling apart here, ladies. In this paper pad, you can see it is white-based, and that is dis I just made a quick decision. I just pulled, I think there's about a dozen, about a dozen or 15 white cardstocks. I certainly will not be creating 15 layouts, but I'm covered. And I also have some white 8.5 by 11 for matting. And then what, I, what did I do for photos? Because I am taking photos along. I am not going to just do base pages. I want to actually take photos along. And so I just went to my Disney box and I grabbed what was left of 2009. I have no idea what's in here. But I do know it's the castle and Magic Kingdom and Magic Kingdom. So to me, that went with that hooray paper pad. This right here. Because this may be birthday oriented. But I can definitely do this Disney. Yeah, Disney. So that's that was why I decided just to grab some Disney photos. Because I'm not going to sit here and try to plan six and seven layouts. No. And I will, when I come back from the trip, I will I show you what I accomplished. And if I didn't accomplish anything, I'll come back and show you that too. So uh, I will be packing that. And I guess I will just show you now what everything is going to go in. Or maybe I'll just show that at the, at the end here. I'm telling you, I'm all over the place today. Yeah. Whew. Okay, so with these pieces in mind, I mean, this is lovely. What a precious little gift to get. Well, what did I do with my paper pad? Oh, man. <laughs> you talk about a last-minute decision. Oh, well, it's like I tell my sister. My sister and I are so different. Because she's, she's you know, when she goes on a trip, last-minute Two hours before, she's good to go. It doesn't matter. I plan a whole week ahead. What am I thinking? What am I doing? Where am I eating? Where am I going? I wish I was more like my sister. Just do it on the fly. Whatever you get, you get. Whatever you forget, go by. Yeah, that's not me. I got to be prepared. I just, I said to her the other day, I wish I could be more like you. But you know what? When she goes on trips, she takes crafty stuff along too. We are alike in that way. Okay, so with this in mind, I will come back in just a minute because I have to go get it. I'm going to show you the items that I paired with this in a quick manner. And you're going to see I may have too much of something and not enough of something else. But just hang on for one minute. 
All right, using this crepe paper hooray 12 by 12 as basically my kit and the color scheme, what I did was I would open up to the first sheet and that is where the colors were or I just flipped this over and looked at those colors. So everything I picked basically is just bright happy colors but you can see within this crepe paper hooray the metallic was silver silver and glitter so I just went along with that too so with keeping this in mind and I will just keep that open there for a minute is that what I did was I went and pulled some stickers and I started with my alphas because this won't just be enough because I'll run out of ease in the second layout if I even get two layouts done. So I just went and pulled some out of my stash that was glitter, festive, and I'm thinking Disney at this point. And that's what I picked. And then I picked, of course, a neutral black. So is that too many? I don't know. I don't have time to think about that right now. No. But this, this is a variety and this is options. And so if I do have time to scrapbook, I know that I'm not going to be limited. And so this is basically just simply fun at this point. So that is the alphas I picked. And definitely, you can see Disney pages. And then I also picked flat stickers, and so I have some crepe paper and Maggie Holmes. And again, look at the color scheme. When you deal with a manufacturer such as crepe paper, this is the color scheme in basically every collection. So I just went, and whenever I saw the turquoise pink and blue and that green, black, yeah, I just picked it. And of course, more crepe paper, crepe paper, and then there's the carousel. So of course, the carousel, if you have that collection, that marries very well. Look at the color scheme. That marries very well with this array. Actually, it's almost basically the same color scheme if you have that carousel. And so then I have stickers. So I thought I need some die cuts. And so with this gift, I was gifted the, this ephemera pack. So I went and pulled some Amy Tangerine because I don't want to just use all stickers. But the option for stickers, and I don't have any chipboard in here, unless you consider what's in this pack. So when I'm picking a kit, I'll tell myself, you can go with flat as long as you put in foam tape because then there's your dimension. So I didn't want just stickers, so I do have this die cut, and these are by Amy Tangerine. Again, by the same manufacturer, American Crafts. The colors are all the same. So plenty of options, plenty of stickers, plenty of fun. And then I went and grabbed some sticker packs. And so just things that are fun and festive. And believe me, this was a very fast process. I just went to my bucket bin. I saw something that had those colors. There's Carnival, Carousel, I'm thinking Disney. So fun and festive. That's all I picked. And of course, anything that had a llama, I threw it in this kit because the llamas were in this. And they're also in this pack right here, those llamas. I think I'm going to do a layout but nothing but llamas and come up with a funny story. Absolutely. And so then you can see as I'm doing this process of kit, I started with my alphas and I started stickers. So I keep going smaller and smaller. So the smaller things I went from that is that I decided to add in some word stickers and honestly this was just grabbing a chunk I didn't even think I just grabbed a chunk that was from my little bin and I will say when you're making a kit and you know there's a certain type of product you use if you have it together see this is just on a jump ring I just grabbed a hunk and a chunk that's all I simply did and the same way with my photo corners I just grabbed a hunk and a chunk <laughs> in different colors because those are things I, kn I know I use. I use word stickers and I use photo corners. And then the other thing I use is breads. So I limited myself and I told myself three pack of breads. And that's all I did. I picked three pack of breads. I didn't even really look at them. I just looked at the colors and the theme. Uh, we have Practically Perfect, Imagine That, which is uh, by Echo Park and Echo Park Summer Dreams. So again, the color schemes. This is fun, festive pastels and then in my embellishment bucket bin i saw these chamel added that and then i wanted to get in some enamel dots and again i just grabbed a chunk and so then i just put them all on a jump ring so i won't lose them again there's some rhinestones there's the colors there's the blue so every color again fun and festive and that is how i made a quick process and then in my embellishment bucket bin i saw those and i'm dealing with this silver so I thought that would just be a nice addition. Just threw that in there. So that is how I put this kit together. Now, since I have all this fun stuff, okay, now let me move this for a minute. What would you think next? Well, what about tools? Okay, so let's talk about tools for a minute. And then I'll talk about a couple other things. So for my tools, 
I definitely thought, okay, well, I need my Mickey head. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to take this punch. I, there's no need. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two 6 by 6 papers, and I'm going to punch nothing but Mickey heads out of this, this turquoise and silver because that was the metallic. One less heavy thing I need to take. Believe me, this helps because I would much rather take another punch than this one. This is too specific, and I only need one basically per layout. So that is what I need to do is I'm going to punch those. I'm going to punch that. And then, of course, I'm taking my large hexagon because there's so much I can do with that. And then I'm taking one edge punch. And I always grab the scallop when I want a generic edge punch. So I'm taking these two. I'm going to leave this at home, but I'm going to punch a few before I go. Now, where will I put those Mickey heads? <laughs> those Mickey heads are going to go in this little embellishment kit. And I've talked about this for um, many, many months on the channel. Just get yourself one of these 4x6 or 5x7 little iris containers or paper studio. And whenever you have little leftovers, bits and bobs, make yourself an embellishment kit. And this thing is chopped. Look how full that is. So if I'm missing something in those other items I selected, I'm sure I can find something in here. See, there's even Mickey heads. There's some flare. And I didn't pull flare. And then, of course, I did pull a few washi. And again, I just made it very quick. I'm like, open up the box, pick a couple. I did turquoise pink. And then one that says happy day. And then I just found this silver glitter and this pink glitter. I'm throwing those all in my kit. That is how quick. Again, I think it was 35, 36 minutes because I did say you had a half hour. I went a few minutes over because I got sidetracked. <laughs> Yes, because then I saw these two paper pads, and I was like, oh, no, don't even go there, Janet. You can't keep adding more paper, but I did. And it was simply because of the colors, and I thought it was just laying there. What's it going to hurt? It really isn't. So I decided to just put those in there, different sizes. I really don't need them. There's a lot in this paper pad. So hopefully I will be able to come back and show you. And thank you, dear friend, for sending those. That was very sweet of you. So now let's talk about how I'm going to pack all of this. And it, it looks like it's a lot, but it really isn't because I have a designated tote that when I'm traveling with supplies, everything must fit in this one tote and one tote only. It's one bag. And, of course, I could take ten bags along and my hubby would be like, whatever you need, just take it. He's very, very special that way. <laughs> yes. Very special when it comes to this hobby because he loves the finished result. So I have this bag here. I've had, I have three of these. And uh, it's like a 31 type of canvas bag, but it's not by 31. I found it at a Southern Charm store down south. And so I like them. I like them and they're very durable. So what is that? It's not even, what, 16? No, 18 inches. And so it's just a canvas bag. And whatever fits in this bag is what I take. What doesn't fit, I can't take. It's just simp that simple. But I don't overstuff it because I, when I sit down to scrapbook, I don't want to have to go through 83 supplies to get busy scrapbooking. And so I am definitely taking this. And this is something I've had for years. I'm not going to purge it. It's a magnetic... Uh, it's a magnetic cutting board, but it fits perfect in this bag, and it's also a nice surface when I go to a hotel or something uh, for my work surface because I never know when I go to scrapbook. I can guarantee you most of the times they're glass tabletops. I don't like scrapbooking on glass. So I've learned over the years I take one of those cutting boards, and it'll fit right in here. This is like so, if it's right in that bag. So then I will put my paper pad, uh, you know, this 12 by 12, it'll go right in there. Easy peasy. Now all this other stuff, here's my plan. And this is the way I do it. I start with the biggest and the heaviest. And then what I do is I take one of those Dollar Tree paper page kit bags that I'm using, those great big bags, and I will put all of this loose stuff in one bag. And I have it laying here. This is what I mean, one of these Dollar Tree bags. Because I'm the type of person, everything has to be contained when I travel. Because if something tips over, I do not want to lose anything. Especially this punch, this punch, or even a pack of a stickers. I just don't want to lose every, anything. So within that bag, everything, that canvas bag I just showed, everything would be in a bag. All my tools, all my paper, even that 12 by 12 paper pad will be in one of these bags. And then they will simply just be inserted in that canvas bag along with my toolkit. So easy peasy. So I, I think that is it. Again, it really didn't take that long. But now I, when I'm looking at things, I'm thinking, did I, did I pick too many things? Uh, do I have too many gems? Do I have too many? It doesn't matter. 
It's just about getting a kit together and then sitting down and playing with those supplies once I get there. Hopefully, I can sit down <laughs> and play with those supplies when I get down there. Yes. So what I will do is I will end this video here and I will bid you farewell until I get back and we will see if I got anything accomplished. Absolutely. So, uh, yes, yeah, send good vibes. I'm going to sit here and quickly, before I go pick out my clothes... <laughs> I'm going to punch a bunch of Mickey heads, put them in a little baggie, and put them along with my kit. Okay, hold on, and uh, I will be back. All right, I am back from the trip, and I wanted to do a check-in how things went. And isn't it something that no matter how much you plan, things don't go that way? And then when you don't plan things, things go even better than what you thought it was going to be. It's amazing how life works that way. I guess it's Murphy's Law. And so as I showed in the earlier segment, I took 15 pieces of cardstock and I said, there's no way I would get 15 layouts done. And that's true. I didn't get 15 done. I got 19. 19 layouts and two base pages. And so I had no idea. <laughs> that I would get that much done. I ran out of paper, so I will show you what I did. So what I'm going to do is, since I have this whole chunk in a skunk, what I will do is I will do a separate layout for this uh, layout chair, and it will be right after this. So just hop in, and it will be listed the same time this video will be. I don't want to do it all in one video. It'll be too long. So what I uh, decided to do when I came home, I thought I would pop in and I would show, yes, I did indeed get some stuff done. And then what did I forget to pack? What I forgot to pack was an extra Ziploc, one of those great big bags, to store my layouts in when I was complete you know, when I completed them and I guess I wasn't thinking I would get anything done but I really should have took something to protect all these layouts once I was done and so that was nothing major I just put them in a tote bag but I would have preferred to have an extra bag for my completed work so think about that when you are packing for supplies what will you put your finished layouts in because here's the thing things pop off you lose things and that's what I was worried about but I didn't lose anything but when I did come home Home and uh, which was just yesterday I made sure nothing was missing and before I was done with the page uh, when I was traveling I made sure things were pretty much adhered but you know sometimes rhinestones will pop off and stickers pop off and the other thing is is that when I was scrapbooking on the go I had made notes so the one thing I wanted to make sure that I uh, came home and I did nothing was missing and I, there's a couple things I'm going to have to make note of when I do my journaling. So anything that I couldn't finish while I was working on these pages, remember that pen and paper comes in handy. And so none of these pages have journaling because I couldn't do that while I was gone. And then of course I have to add something to a title when I'm done filming. And then what was, what was the other note? The other note is the thing, the other thing I forgot to pack. And it was a roll of washi that I didn't care for. So in my kit, I did pack some washi, but it was my good washi and I didn't want to use it. And so I needed something to cover up my braids. And then I did cut and gut some papers. So you need some washi for some stability. I forgot to pack an old roll of washi. So I just did that when I came home. So again, pen and paper you just make a note so really I didn't really forget anything but I uh for the ride home I would have felt better if I would have had my layouts in a bag but I just put them in a uh you know like a shopping bag and then put them in my tote and so I will tell you that my paper pads are kind of skimpy because I did scrapbook so what I'm going to um basically do is that everything I packed I will put away where it goes and I did have some leftovers as far as uh papers so what will I do with these because I still have some I still have some layouts to do but just because how do I want to say this even though I still have some layouts to do that doesn't mean I have to use this paper pad I do not use the same collection for an entire trip because I get too bored with it and so what I will do is all these little bits and bobs I will not keep with the paper pad even though they go with it so these will all go in my scrap <coughs> excuse me in my scrap folder except for these small paste pieces they will go in my perch pile because I don't keep small things I you know you just too many little things bother my brain but uh, all these this was my leftovers and so while I was on the trip and I uh, before I packed everything up I had some leftovers so I made a couple base pages and I'll talk about that in the layout chair so these are just going to go in my scrap uh, folder and be done everything else will get put away so I wanted to show you what I took along for the car ride and then just hop into the next video and I will show you all of these 19 layouts 
and then my two base pages that I created. Just absolutely fun. So what I took along for the car ride, which was on the way down, I ended up creating three classes or series. So I was just in the mood for that. And so that's what I did. But on the way home, I guess because I was so tired and I had spent a few uh, hours scrapbooking, I wasn't in the mood for uh, looking at content and things like that. So I had this little, it's a little slim line. You know, it's like an iris container type thing, but it is, I will tell you how big it is. It is, let's see. Well, it's about 13, probably uh, a 12 by 13 type of thing. So you're not going to get a piece of paper in there, but it's very uh, slim. It's only a couple inches deep. So what I took on this one, on this car ride, since it was so long, you know, it's just busy work. So what I decided to do, and I promised I would show this, and I did work on this on the way home, is that you'll see this is nothing but fabric. Hmm. So what do I do with fabric? <laughs> and so I will show you. This is something that uh, is kind of new to me. It's a, a technique that I have been playing around with. And so you'll see more about it uh, coming up in 2020. But basically it's taking uh, fabric and it is putting it on sticky paper and then cutting out this uh, design and then you're making your own embellishments out of fabric. And so this is what I played with. And so I will show more about this in another video. It'll be about fussy cutting. So you'll see more about this, but this is what I worked on uh, for the way home. And I tell you, it was a lot of busy work and it was enjoyable because I could still uh, chat with hubby because he loves for me to chat. Uh, thank God, <laughs> because that's all I do is talk. Uh, but he uh, he likes for me to chat. We don't even take music along anymore. We don't listen to the radio because I am the music. So I got this entire bag, and I'll show more about this later. Um, but look at these embellishments, and they're um, they have a nice backing. So basically, I was making ephemera, and so I have different fabric, and I even have leaves, and look at all that fun stuff. So I will talk more about that in the. The products I use. So this was a very simple product because uh, project because all I did was take fabric. You know that folds very thin. A, a pair of a uh, Tim Holtz scissors and then also to my sticky backed paper. That's all I took. Basically three things, and then it was easy to manage along the road. Now let me show you a little tip that I have learned over the years when you are doing something like fussy cutting or playing with supplies in the vehicle while you're traveling down the road. That is to have, make sure you have yourself a little bit of a trash bag. So I always take a Ziploc bag along and this was all my trash. I kept it so I could show you. This was all my trash. And so if you're in a vehicle and you're in a small space, because this is why I take along something like this, because I use this, uh, you can use this as your surface. And then this is small enough that I opened it that this was actually, I had this on my lap, and so I had this as my surface. And so I needed some place to put my, um, you know, to put my trash as I'm working on this. You don't want to put it in here, it gets all mixed up. So I just, you take a Ziploc, Ziploc bag along, and that way when you stop, you just zip it up and nothing's gonna go rolling out on the floor. And then uh, what I do is I just stick it in one of a cup holder or the door handle, and so you have like your little baggie already. Ready. It's just something I learned over the years. You have to take this kind of stuff along because what are you going to do with your trash? Uh, you don't want it mixed up with your good stuff. So it's just a because you are working in such a small space, you have to think about these things ahead of time. You know, that might be a little obsessive, but you know what I mean. And so I would just throw all of that away. But yes, that is what I worked on this trip. Sometimes I will make faux chipboard. I've showed that before. Uh, sometimes I will um, create sketches. Sometimes I'll create content. This trip, I did a little bit of both. I came up with three different series that you'll see in 2020. And then I made my own fabric uh, sticker backed. Well, they're not going to be sticker backed. They're just uh, paper backed embellishments. And just look how many more I have to do. 
look at those pretty aren't those pretty fall colors and so this was very enjoyable it did not take up a lot of space and it's just one it's just busy work that's really all it is and so that is what I took along so I wanted to pop in and show that and then also to in the next video I will show you all those layouts I completed and so that is how I travel with scrapbook supplies it can be done it can be done on a small scale and you can be very productive uh, and if you're someone that you can't remember what to take what I always do is I pretend that I'm going to sit down and scrapbook with that bag of supplies I packed and then I just visually look do I have my trimmer do I have my ruler do I have a pen do I have my adhesive so kind of give it a little bit of a trial run before you head out the door but you don't want to take everything in the kitchen sink and you can see in the previous segment I didn't take a lot whatever fit in that tote went and I had plenty the only thing is that I wish I would have took an old an old roll of washi I could have used the good stuff but you know we don't do that, no. But I did use another roll of washi. So yes, that was fun. And then also to, don't forget, if you do get to scrapbook and you do complete a project, what are you going to put that completed project in? In this case, I just had little baggies I could put my completed stuff in. And then for my layouts, I forgot to put, you know, I forgot to put something in there. So no big deal. But it's always those things that you think about... <laughs> while you're out and about absolutely so i hope that was a little bit fun a little bit informative and i hope you got some ideas about that and uh, i will also uh on my next trip coming up uh i may be flying on that one so i probably won't be taking anything but if i do i'll show but i always say if you are a scrapbooker the one thing you always need to take on every trip is this right here pen and paper you never know when a story will uh, be something that'll come to your mind, a layout idea, a design idea, a color scheme. You may see an advertising, uh, some marketing, and then you get an idea. So pen and paper is a must for a scrapbooker or some photo ideas. Absolutely. So I, that is the end of the video. I hope this was enjoyable and uh, come back to RTS because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.